Hi, I'm Lou Ann Hammond, DrivingTheNation.com. I'm here with Dan Widoff, one of the chassis systems control people and autonomous vehicle. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. So we're in a Tesla Model S. Yes. But you've recreated this electric vehicle into an electric vehicle and an autonomous vehicle. Yes, we installed a lot of sensors. We took almost the whole car apart, installed all the wirings for the sensors, installed Bosch sensors, video cameras, radar sensors, la laser scanners, and put it back together to enable it to be autonomous in the end. And now we have all these screens and buttons for you to show us how an electric vehicle that is autonomous works. Yes. Let's see it. Okay, so the system is ready all. Uh, I just pull that lever here and you hear a small sound and the car starts driving on its own. This is our visualization that you see here. We have the map data, that's the blue data in the background, which tells us where the road network is, where we're allowed to drive, <coughs> that we generate beforehand um, by Bosch. In the end, this might come from a mapping provider, uh, from a third party for all of Germany or all of the United States in some case. Um, what you also see is the sensor data, so in yellow and green, this is the live sensor data that our laser scanners and radar sensors record, and which we use to uh, react on other cars. Right now we're stopping at an intersection, and we're, uh, we're waiting until all the other cars have left the, the intersection. Now are you putting your foot on the brake? No, I'm not doing anything you at all. Look, Ma, just, no hands? Yeah. Okay. And no feet. No feet also. All right. We just have to wait. There's another car coming. How many sensors do you have on this vehicle? Uh, 15 around that. Around 15? Yeah. Okay. But there are sensors that were on the vehicle even before you... Uh, well, ESP was, yes. But uh, all the real environment perceiving sensors, uh, we installed ourselves. It's more than adaptive cruise control. The function that we're seeing is similar to adaptive cruise control, but we're also steering the car and doing the decisions. So ACC is just uh, doing uh, adapt uh, speed adaptions. So how long before this could come out? Most of the OEMs aim for 2020 in that area. Of course, there are some uh, companies uh, who are promising it in two or three years, but it depends. So probably in the end it will be uh, an issue of safety and leg legislation. So first of all, the legislation has to be ready, it has to be safe, and then it can go. So Dan, the artificial intelligence, how, do you, how does Bosch approach artificial intelligence when it comes to autonomous vehicles? Of course, you have to do a lot of testing and uh, data-driven approaches, so that you're sure that you actually cover the whole area of situations, different weather types and everything. Mm -hmm. So what is needed is really a, a big data set that you gather a lot of data with test drivers uh, all over the world uh, in different scenarios, different weather conditions, and then you have to make sure that all your algorithms work on these data sets or even use those data sets to, to improve your algorithms. What about when it's completely white, there's been a snow white? out uh, and everything is covered in snow. Mm -hmm. Then we would at, le at least have our radar sensors uh, which can still detect something. You have the GPS sensor which gives you data but in the end it's a question if you're still able to drive there so if everything would be completely white uh, it would probably be difficult because you can't even s tell where the road exactly is. In technology, what's the one challenge you still have for getting this out on the road by 2020? In the end, it will probably be safety and redundancy. It has to work in all cases, like in 100%, even if a sensor fails or drops out. Mm -hmm. There could be an electric failure or something, so you need redundant power supplies. Uh, and that's probably the main challenge. Mm 